Hi there and welcome back to Circuit the World. My name's Alice and today we're going to be making something very cool. So with Disney Plus having come out recently in the UK, I've been on a bit of a Pirates of the Caribbean high. I basically binge watched through the whole of the Pirates of the Caribbean series, one to five. When I was younger, I absolutely loved Elizabeth Swan. So much so I had my very own Elizabeth Swan gown. It's so cute. I used to love this thing. I literally, I remember getting it and then never ever wanting to take it off ever again. I used to hate the bonnet though because I never really understood how it was supposed to... Oh, I guess that's how it's supposed to work. I never used to understand how it used to work. Seeing this dress made me really want my own again. Now, obviously I can't fit into this one as fun as that probably would be for a video. But instead, I thought, why not try and make it? Now, I'm not going to be simple and just recreate this. This is, you know, one layer, bit of Velcro doing up, jersey material, nice and easy. I'm not that smart. I don't like to make things that easy. No, 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 no. I'm going to be making not just this dress, but every single layer she puts on when she puts this dress on. I'm talking the underdress, which I'll be making out of a white cotton and elastic combo, which I don't really quite know how to do the sleeves yet, but we're working on it. That then comes with a little waistcoat that's not boned or anything, it just kind of sits over the top to give the white dress a little bit more shape. Over the top of that we have her corset, which is obviously very important in the Pirates of the Caribbean film. And then over the top of that, I'm going to make a petticoat with some tulle to give the skirt some structure. It'll be a white satin skirt that goes underneath and her skirt kind of has like a gold over over jacket thing over the top of the skirt, which has caused me a lot of headaches to try and work out. But we'll be making not only the underskirt, but also the wearable over the top gold section. So there are five, six layers to this design. And I'm a very amateur sewer, so this is going to go super well. But I'm going to take you through and try and show you how I, hopefully, successfully make a five-piece Elizabeth Swan Pirates of the Caribbean gold dress outfit for just £50. Everything I have got has equated to around £50, UK pounds. So hopefully I can recreate this or at least something similar to it. And hopefully it's going to look awesome. So for this project, I have some pins, some gold and white thread, which I purchased. I have a tape measure, which oddly I didn't already have. One meter of pink cotton. This will be for the corset. Two meters of white cotton. This will be for the underdress and maybe the petticoat if I have enough left over, but I don't think I will. Lots of tool again for the petticoat. Hopefully this will help us give some structure and some va -va -voosh to the skirt. I kind of was hoping it was going to be wider than this when I ordered it, but this is what we're working with. A meter square of lace for the neck trimming, for the arm trimming. Three meters of white satin. Now, I do think I've got too much of this. Uh, this has obviously got to do the under bodice section and the under skirt. I'm hoping that this is what I'm going to have left over for the petticoat. The gold zipper, which I actually don't think I'm going to need now, but I have it, so maybe just in case. Zip ties, which are going to be confusing for most people, but boning's expensive, so I'm going to try and recreate a cheap version of boning with zip ties. Three meters of gold satin. This is obviously the main thing of our dress. The very, very needed elastic. Uh, I also have some grommets for lacing, they're not here, they're somewhere else. I have some ivory, I have an, a meter of ivory cotton coming as well, uh, that's not here yet. And I'm also waiting on some ribbon to arrive, that's not here yet, but they're not integral parts of the main build. I've basically got enough here now that I can start, which I've been wanting to do for about a week. Everything I purchased off eBay, because at the moment uh, I'm having difficulty getting delivery from anything else. So it's all new stuff, but it's all come from eBay. I've done a lot of research for this. I've watched a lot of videos. I've read a lot of patterns. I've tried to work out a lot of things. I've done a lot, a lot of drawings of every different sketch. I did a costume study, so I saw how it kind of all, how it fits, how it all looked like it should go together. I've done that. I've done sketches and re-sketches and other sketches and looked at videos online and looked at different tutorials and stuff. So I've got a lot of information in my arsenal. I just hope that I can do it effectively and I can produce something really cool and really awesome. So please enjoy my attempt to make Elizabeth Swan's gold dress from Pirates of the Caribbean Class of the Black Pearl for £50. So the first thing I did was measured myself to get my measurements that I needed for the underdress. I did realise quite quickly that I didn't quite have enough material for the underdress. So the skirt was more of a pencil skirt rather than a fit and flare, which is what I was aiming for. Um, I thought this would work because I was going to cinch in the waist, but because I didn't have enough to make the skirt 
bigger than I needed it to be. It didn't really work and it did restrict movements. What I'm doing here is I'm using a t-shirt I had that I already liked the fit of or the cut of the shirt was very similar to the bodice I wanted because I wasn't using patterns so I was using what I had to try and replicate the shapes I wanted. The sleeves you'll see have this little arch and that is what is going to give us the puff sleeve which you will see later on. So I decided to work on the bodice first, so the first bit I'm doing is just sewing down the seams, they'll be around the edging of the opening at the front, and then I'm pinning together both sides and sewing the shoulders together so I have a base. Now what you'll see me doing is putting the sleeves on, so I'm basically ruching that arch we had earlier until the sleeve is the same size as the sleeve opening, and that means that the top of the sleeve is all bunched and that should give us the puffed effect. The sleeves actually took a little bit of working out because I couldn't get my head around the puff and then making sure that the sleeve was the right length and the weird shape I had at the bottom just confused me a little bit. Um, so here I'm actually pinning down the elastic channel for the, for the waist of the skirt and now I'm pinning that to the dress, sewing that all together so I now have a one piece thing uh, which will have a channel in the middle where you will see me thread the elastic into. So here you can see me threading that elastic in now. Again, this was another part that actually caused me a bit of problem because my sewing of the channel wasn't neat. So I had parts where I actually couldn't get the elastic through. So just make sure the elastic channel is nice and open. What I'm doing here is adding a little bit of elastic to the end of the sleeves. I'm using a zigzag stitch to attach this on and just kind of pulling it taut and going all the way around as you're on both sleeves so that there's a bunched up effect on the end of the sleeve as she has in the dress. As you can see here, the channel is in the middle for the elastic in the center, and then we've got those ruched sleeves with the puff shoulders as I'd worked on with the little arches. And that was the underdress. So the next part of the dress I decided to work on was the ball gown skirt, the white satin skirt that will be visible. Um, I wanted to do this because I needed some of that material to make my petticoat, so I wanted to know how much I would have left, and I had to work out how much I needed for the actual skirt. This space isn't big enough to lay out my material, and the only other place I have to lay out the material is downstairs, which is where the puppies are, which means they're gonna walk in all over it because they're gonna be very curious as to what I'm doing. Plus, it's gonna get covered in dog hair because it's gonna be downstairs with the dogs. And they've just been barred, so they're all wet, and this is just a nightmare. So I might wait on this for a bit. I might go and do the bodice and the stop the petticoat skirt instead, because I can do that now. So this is actually exactly what I ended up doing. What you can see me doing now is measuring out, again, how much material I'll need for the ball gown so I know how much I can cut off for the petticoat. Now I did actually end up making the petticoat twice because the first version I made just didn't have any volume and it was a really pointless piece. There will be another video on the channel coming up soon showing how I originally made it and then how I worked it to make it better as you'll see in this video. But basically the first version just wasn't voluminous enough, it really wasn't doing anything for me and it just, it wasn't good, it didn't look very good as you're about to see. Yeah, it looks awful, I know. So basically what I did is I decided to rework that and after watching a video on YouTube, I cut off the top waist section because that was still a good section and the waistline and the elastic I'd done on the original one did work quite well. I basically decided I was going to make a circle skirt. So I tried to unpick the tool to not waste too much of it because I didn't have a lot, um, but that didn't work so I did end up having to cut that out. Basically what I then did was took the remainder of the skirt and turned that into a circle skirt by using two strips out of the original skirt I had. This then just gave me much more movement, much more volume automatically before I'd even added any tool on. So what you see me doing now is just sewing that new layer of the circle skirt onto the bottom of the original waistband. And then what I did is I rolled out the tool and I basically made the tool double the width. Because as I said earlier, the tool wasn't quite as wide as I wanted it to be. Then I added it in two layers. So the doubled up layer went around the bottom of the skirt, whilst a single layer of the tool then went onto the top of the skirt. Now ruffling was an absolute pain in the nightmare on this. Uh, I did end up trying to pin it all in place, but in the end I just ended up dragging it over my shoulder and just ruffling it up as I went and as I sewed it on. As you can see, the tool is over my shoulder now. So the bottom of the skirt had a double layer, so a double width of the tool, and then there was another layer of that tool over the top to give it a little bit more va-va-voom. What you see me doing here is building the white panel uh, for the gold layer, which is actually the bodice as part of the overlayer section. That all makes sense a bit later, but basically what I'm doing here is making the underlayer out of 
some of the leftover uh, cotton I had and then the overlay out of the satin. I'm using zip ties as the boning in this piece because it's cheaper than actual boning. Be careful though, don't sew over the boning with a sewing machine because it will break. What I did here after I'd done that is I basically put the zip ties into the underlayer, underlayer of the cotton and then hidden that whole cotton layer under the satin so you couldn't see it. Now we get on to the ball gown and the big skirt. Now what I tried to do is make sure I had enough gold material that I would be able to make the same size skirt out of the gold. That in the end became absolutely a mute point. What I'm trying to do here is put the seam at the back so it's all one full piece with a back seam and then I'm going to elasticate the waist so it cinches in the center but you still get all of that volume. I did try some darts in the end of this uh, skirt but it just didn't work. Here you can see me now ruching the top of the skirt for the waistband. This waistband really didn't work for me. Uh, waistbands are not my strength, clearly. But here I am just sewing down those pleats so that they stay in place so when I attach the waistband, the skirt is already quite cinched but then gets cinched again when the waistband comes in. So here I am making that waistband way too thin as you can see and having to use a chopstick to get it round and out the other way. That took forever, just FYI. So just make sure your waistband is nice and thick so when it gets turned in it's not this thin. Then what I did is pinned that waistband to the top of the skirt. It was at this point I decided I wasn't going to elasticate the waist, I was going to use the ruffling to make sure the waist was the right size, and then I was going to use a zipper, which you see me attaching here, which I had originally got for the gold section. Now I'd already decided by this point I wasn't going to use the zipper for the gold section, and yes, the zipper's gold, which is horrible against the white, but because it gets hidden under the golden layer, you don't actually see that zipper tool, so it works fine. Here I'm doing up the seam up to the point of where the zipper will come in at the back, and then I hand sewed in the zipper because it was just easier to get a hand sew in first to make sure it was all held in place and then I reinforced that on the machine later on. I did also end up using a small fastening over the back of this uh, zipper once the skirt was done. Firstly, that then used part of the skirt to cover up the zip so even if I didn't have the gold layer on, you don't see the zipper at all. Secondly, I hadn't quite made the skirt small enough. The waist was a little bit loose and it kept dropping. So I just put a small hook and eye fasten on the back to make sure that stayed in place where it should be once we were done. So yeah, here I am just reinforcing those hand stitches with a very slow but steady machine stitch. I didn't have a zipper foot on, which actually made this process a lot harder because I then had to contend with trying to get around the zip. But that was the end of the ball gown skirt and I was pretty happy with it in the end. The next stage was to make the little waistcoat that goes over the underdress. As I did for the underdress, I used a shirt as my pattern to kind of get the shaping and the layout of it fine because that's what I liked. Uh, what I didn't quite account for was the fact that the shirt I was using was made of a jersey and the material I was using was a cotton, so there wasn't any stretch. And that did kind of make the thing a bit tight when we got to the end of it. But again, as I did on the underdress, the first thing I did was pin down and sew on the seams before attaching the two parts together. I did have some Formula One on in the background to keep me entertained whilst I was doing this. Sometimes I was listening to Harry Potter uh, on audiobook whilst I was sewing. Just something to have on in the background whilst I was doing this project. So as you can see here, I'm now having to adjust the back piece to make sure it fits the same size as the uh, front piece. And here I am again sewing down the seam allowance on that. This is very much a copy paste of the process I just did. I did do some little nicks in the curved edge to try and make that seam a bit smoother, which did work because you can then fold under the seam a little bit over this over itself or under itself so it's just a bit neater and keeps that curve nice and in place. Next was pinning the two sides together. Um, now I did this first by pinning both the edges together and sewing that together and then I went back and cut the center front to make it a waistcoat. This was the point where I realized that this didn't have any stretch and was a little bit tighter than the shirt would have been had the material been made of jersey. But what I then did was pin back the sew pinning to make sure that was a nice clean seam, sewed that down and then got to work on lacing up the front. So what I did here was a technique I learned from Makera Tours and she basically ties knots into a ribbon and then sews those knots onto the garment using the space between the knots as the lacing, so the little loops for the lacing. So that's what I did. This took forever. 
I think I got through about two races just watching this. But then I used some more ribbon to lace it up at the end and we had a nice little waistcoat. So the next part that came was my favourite part, making the corset. Now I knew this was going to be so much more complicated than anything I tried to do so far in the project, so I did take the initiative to draft my own pattern. I, look, I watched a few videos, try and got this as good as I could um, before I put it all together, but the corset didn't quite turn out how I wanted it to be. For my first ever corset I'd made, I was quite happy with the result, but it's not quite right. I cut the material wrong twice as well, which didn't help, but the plan was to make an underlayer that held the boning or the zip ties and then an overlayer that covered it up. So here at this point, I'm just sewing those two layers together. I had tried to do this kind of fringe effect because if you look at Elizabeth Swan's corset, it does have a fringe effect. It didn't work. So that's why now that whole fringe is totally gone. But at the moment I have an opening at the top with two layers sandwiched together so I can tuck all of the zip ties in place. What I'm doing now is painstakingly cutting and filing down all of the cable ties, or zip ties sorry, so that they are the right size. What I did now was went back to the sewing machine, leaving the opening open at the top and sewed down all of the channels I'd drawn in place so that they were ready to receive the zip ties. Back in my room, I'm just putting all of the zip ties in, cutting and filing down any that are a little bit too long, and putting them all in place, which gave a little bit of structure to the underlying underlining of my corset. Here you can see me doing more of that. Again, I'd cut them, I tried to do this first. I think I gave up actually because it was taking so long and just went and sewed the channels, which is why you see me doing it again. Here I am now trying to make the over layer. I had done something bad with the pink, which is why we also have the white layer in as well. I didn't have enough pink to make both sides of the lining, annoyingly. So the white became the inside of the lining and the pink became the outside of the lining. There, just then you could see me with the pink having now four, layer, four parts rather than two because I had cut up slightly badly the pink material. So here you can see me just sewing down the top of all of the channels and the top of the lining layer on the corset. And now I'm pinning together those two bits of pink that I accidentally cut wrong, um, which I didn't mind in the end because it gave quite a nice detailing to the front, a nice like line coming through the middle, which I wasn't mad at. So what I did next was sew down the seams again in the center where the two would come together. And I made a decision that hers looked like it was laced at the front, even though it wasn't, so I was going to do a similar thing. So what I'm doing now is, again, painstakingly sewing on this ribbon in the zigzag formation so that it looks like it's laced from the front when it comes together. I did that on both sides, and then I put them all together with the white lining and sewed along the top to hold everything in place. I didn't sew along the bottom or the sides just yet because I had to work out still how I was going to get the lining in that I'd made the day before. So here you can see me laying out some more boning channels for the top layer and cutting out basically this fringe effect which I was very determined to get back in, making them much wider than I originally had so that they would actually hold their shape and not just look awful when I turned them out. Just to make it clear, I'm working at the moment on the wrong side of everything, so it's wrong and right sides together. So here I am laying out the channeling after I cut those parts together, and then I laid the lining over the top with the channels, that, with the boning, sorry, I'd already put in, over the top, so that would lay over the top. And what I did now is sew together the boning, so the layer inside the corset layer I don't actually think has gone in yet, but at the moment I'm putting the boning channels in for the over layer so that they can stay in place and be in the right place. Because I'd already broken one needle trying to sew together um, zip ties by accident, so I didn't really want to repeat that process. Um, and then I just put the inside lining inside and then turned everything out the right way. What I'm doing here is making some spaghetti noodles for the straps which I did have to get. Uh, I made a certain length and then tried it on, made some adjustments after I tried it on and then brought them to the right length. I do think they're still a little bit long, um, but they're pretty good. Now here we're putting in grommets. Now the first grommets I had were awful, as I will show you later a comparison between the two. So I did actually order some better grommets and you can find a link to that with everything else down below. Um, the, the new grommets were so much nicer, so much better, so much cleaner. The original grommets were actually tearing the ribbon as I was trying to pull it through. 
which was awful and meant that this wouldn't have many wears before I had to replace materials. So I basically took out all of the old grommets, repunched all of the holes so they looked nice and clean, and put in the new grommets, which were much, much better, much better quality, and didn't kind of break as I tried to put them in. As you'll see in a moment when I show you the comparison between the two, this was just a much, much better toolkit and a much, much better grommet set. As you can see, there was the awful grommets next to the nice ones. And finally, we came to the last part of the project, the hardest part of the project, the golden overlayer. Now, I'd taken this shirt because I draped it over a dress form and I really liked the way it fell and I thought it could really do well at creating the silhouette I was after. So I was trying to utilize that as much as possible. I didn't really have a game plan for this section. I just knew that I wanted to keep as much of the gold as possible because I wanted the skirt to be super, super full. And my idea was to use the bodice inner panel, the silver panel, the, sorry, the white panel I'd made earlier and use that to help close it up and cinch in the waist so I didn't really care too much about the design of the skirt section. Here you see me sewing right sides together, putting the shoulder seams in and now I am pinning back the opening to make a clean seam down the centre which will be the opening of the dress so this will remain open. And now just sewing that in place. I did make a decision as well to add some embroidery down the insides um, here, which I do later on. Here is me using my dress form to try and work out darts. I do not get darts. I don't understand darts. It confused me a lot. But here you see me um, actually undoing the sleeves I'd made originally. The original sleeves I made were just too tight. When I had attached them to the gold layer, it was really restrictive. It was really tight under my arm. So what I did was took those original sleeves off and made those the bottom, bell-bottom section of the sleeve uh, and then remade the big sleeves so they were much more comfortable and slightly bigger. Uh, the dress does hang slightly big over her arms anyway, so this was okay. What you just saw me doing, now you see me embroidering, but what you just saw me doing was attaching the white bodice panel as it is here to the section so now you can kind of see the jacket style of this layer coming together. Now I'm adding on fastening so that it will close up and stay exactly where it should be and be tight. I had to do this a couple of times because I had to keep moving it closer and closer to really help cinch that waist. This was quite a difficult section, I really did struggle with this. I think utilizing the dress form more would have been better. Um, but I was trying to use the dress form as little as possible so you guys can follow along if you don't have one. Here we see me adding on the lace collaring and the lace uh, section from the sleeves which were really easy and to do. I used the edging of the lace to have a nice clean finish around the neck and then just use a bit of the lace around the sleeves. Turn that all, sew that right sides together, turn that all out and we had the finished product. with the finished article this is my elizabeth swan golden gown from pirates of the caribbean which you just saw me wearing i'm really really happy with it i'm so proud of how it's come out genuinely the hardest part for me was the gold uh, overlayer just i don't understand darts genuinely generally i just don't understand darts so working out how these darts fell i ha i think i unpicked and redid these darts at least six or seven times also the sleeves were a bit of a pain as well as you saw i did actually end up remaking the sleeves because i was trying to give the puff like we have in the underdress the puff sleeves but i just couldn't i don't think the original sleeves i cut out which are ironically uh, actually the bell bottoms of the sleeves now um but the original sleeves i cut out just weren't big enough to effectively achieve the puff sleeve there wasn't enough length around which then meant that it didn't actually quite fit the sleeve hole i had which then meant it was quite tight under my arm when i was wearing it which wasn't so comfortable so i did have to completely redo the sleeves but to be fair the lace went really well that was very quick um 
Also, the positioning of the fastenings, I had to do multiple times. You can see there's actually a little bit of puckering, luckily hidden now. Uh, under there but this was definitely the hardest part the corset was very difficult mainly because i'd never made a corset before i didn't really know what i was doing um, and definitely don't skimp out on the grommets it's very important to buy nice expensive grommets because they're well, nice expensive good grommets not cheap grommets so you can actually effectively do the grommet holes and put them in as you saw the grommets that are now on the corset that you saw after the fact went on much easier, the holes punch is much better. There's a link to that kit down below within the list of things that I purchased for this dress. But this entire dress, all six layers, bar the accessories, the necklace was 10 pounds, the shoes were 15, maybe 20. Again, they'll be linked down below as well. But the actual dress, all of the material, everything I did making this, 50 quid, just 50 quid maybe slightly over but around 50 pounds uh, which genuinely for what we have here for what we've ended up with is really not a lot of money and I'm super proud with everything uh, I've managed to do now considering I'm not a professional sewer the last time I made a dress was at least seven years ago maybe up to ten it's been a very long time since I even attempted to make a dress and most of the dresses I've made before were nowhere near this good barely wearable so I am really impressed that we've not only got this overlayer but we've got this this hidden fastening we've got the ball gown we've got the petticoat there's so many elements to this dress that i genuinely wasn't sure if i'd be able to do and our end okay it's not perfect it's not the neatest job you know i've had to do some top stitching this dart really does need neatening up a little bit so let's not talk about it but for my skill level and i've learned a hell of a lot doing this and i've just really enjoyed doing it i've had a great time doing it and i'm really really happy with the end product we have because i just think it's it's really really good for what we have and i think out of context you could tell what this dress was supposed to be if you knew the parts of the caribbean films obviously if you don't it's kind of iconic to the film series but it's not like a very iconic outfit that if you saw it you'd be like oh yeah that's from Pirates of the Caribbean so um but I think I've done a smashing job on it I've learned a hell of a lot still don't really understand darts um but I've learned a lot about corsets petticoat ball gown skirts a little bit about darts fastenings sleeves all of it I've just learned so much doing this and I'm really excited to put what I've learned in this project which was a hell of a task into future projects now I do have some plans for future projects the first new plan is a follow-up on this I'm gonna attempt to make Elizabeth Swan's pirate outfit from Pirates of the Caribbean Dead Man's Chest I'm not planning on attempting her pirate look in the third film at World's End just because it's very complicated the material looks it's almost like armor, almost scale-like. I'm not really sure what material I'd use for that. Um, so I probably won't be going into that one, plus that headdress, I'm not even going there. But for the next project, I've got the boots already. We're gonna be reworking the boots because they currently have a zipper and I don't want them to have a zipper on them because I want them to look as authentic as I can. Um, so I'm gonna be taking the zipper out of the boots. We're gonna be making a three-point pirate hat. We're gonna be making the, the sword holder, her shirt, her trousers and the coat as well that she wears and the waistcoat. There's a few elements to that one again, because I don't like to do things by halves. Um, but I'm really excited and I do think it's gonna be a lot easier than this was. Obviously I've learned a lot like with the, with the underdress, the sleeves. Uh, for the underdress are going to be very similar to what I'll make for the sleeves of the uh, shirt she wears, the white shirt she wears um, in the pirate look. The coat I'm very excited about making. I think that's going to be the most difficult thing we tackle. None of these costumes are historically accurate. I did actually try because this lacing should actually be on the, I think it's called a chemise. I don't really know, but I think it's called a chemise and the lacing should be on the undergarment so that it kind of peeks through because that was how they were designed in the day. But Firstly, I tried that with the collar and it looked awful, uh, so I took that all out and put it on the gold. Secondly, in the film, the lace is attached to the gold layer, not the chemise layer, because when she ends up being dragged out of the water for, uh, by Jack Sparrow and he takes her corset off, her dress doesn't have any lace on it. The white dress she's been wearing doesn't have any lace on it, which is why I didn't want to add the lace. I wasn't going to and then I found out that historically I should and then I tried and I didn't like how it looked so I went sod it. We're just going to go back to what we did plan and put the lace on the gold rather than the white chemise. I'm really happy I did because I think it looks so much better. 
Um, so yeah, these things aren't going to be historically accurate. I firstly don't know enough about historical fashion to know if they're historically accurate or not. Plus, I'm working on kind of my knowledge of sewing, what I've learned doing projects, what I learned from watching some other videos on YouTube. Again, all of the videos I've used as references for this video to work this out are linked below. Very good channel I've used a lot is Makara Tours. She's very good, very, well, I think she's very funny. She has some very, a very interesting style of a uh, tutorial, I guess you can call them. Um, but she, a lot of the styles and a lot of the ways I've tried to do things on this dress have come from inspiration from her videos. So that's it on DIY dressmaking. Until next time when we tackle Elizabeth Swan's pirate outfit. Now I do have two other costumes I am planning on making. Don't know when they'll come because this took over 30 hours, I'm gonna guess. The corset itself took 10. If there's any other film costumes you want to see me attempt to make, please let me know in the coffee pot down below and I will definitely check them out. I can't promise I'll get around to all because they do take long. But for now, thank you so much for hanging out with me today. It's been an absolute blast as always. If you enjoyed this video, go show that like button some pirates of the Caribbean love. And if you want to support the channel, go hit subscribe and ring that bell so you don't miss next time I upload a video. Stay awesome and I will see you all in the next video!